All right, in this demonstration, I want to show you uh, as a Mac user how you can uh, download uh, an application called Jamp, which is spelled X-A-M-P-P. -P. And lots of people pronounce it differently. Some people say Xamp, some people say Zamp, some people say Jamp. I think it's supposed to be Jamp because that's what they say on their website. Anyway, so if you do a quick search in Google, all right, so uh, for that, uh, X-A-M-P-P, first hit is going to be something that looks like this. If it's from uh, www.apachefriends.org, then you're good. You can just go um, to the main site or you can just go straight to the download page. I'll just go to the main site to show you a little bit uh, because it also has easy download options from there. So um, as of the date that I'm recording this, which is in May of 2016, this is what the page is going to look like. It might look a little bit different if you're watching this in the future. Um, and then there's also a little video over here that you can watch that explains um, a little bit about the project. And basically what it, it tells you is that it's a, a development package for your personal computer uh, so that you can install a web service which is here Apache and um, a MySQL service, which in this case is uh, MariaDB. And I'll explain a little bit about that in a minute. And then the PHP module, which plugs into Apache. And uh, it also has Perl, which we're not really going to be messing with in this, this class, but it, it does have this uh, capability. And um, the thing that's really uh, nice about this is that you can do development on your own computer without have to con having to constantly upload stuff to a server to test it, because PHP uh, is not something that you can actually render on your own computer the way that, say, you could render HTML out. So in the past, when you've used HTML, you've just been able to um, make your HTML changes and then view it in the browser uh, using the file protocol. And it doesn't work like that with PHP. You actually have to have a web service running, in this case, like I said, Apache, with the PHP module loaded. And uh, that PHP module will help parse the dynamic scripting language, which we know as PHP, uh, so that it can handle it and then spit it back out as HTML. So, um, and the only way that you could do that without installing uh, some sort of development package on your computer is if you were to literally upload changes every time you made them to a server um, in the cloud that has PHP installed so that you could refresh your page and then see it, which is sort of a pain in the butt. So anyway, that's why this is really wonderful. There are other things out there for Mac. Uh, there's MAMP. And um, the, the thing that's nice about XAMPP in this particular instance is that it's very reliable and it's cross-platform. So the, the way that things are going to look uh, the way that they're primarily going to look and be set up and the way that they're going to work in Windows is going to be similar to the way that they're going to feel in um, a Mac and the way that they access the file system. Um, so anyway, but MAMP is fine. Uh, in the past when I've used it, just in case you are you know, interested in using that, in the past when I've used it, um, it was fine. And then some version came out where uh, it was just so unreliable that like all of the students in my class who were using it were having trouble. And so I've pretty much relied on Jamp ever since because it is that has always been reliable. Um, and MariaDB, in case you're wondering, uh, it is um, it's basically a fork off of MySQL. MySQL is um, was originally created and as a free open source product, Sun servers uh, or Sun Microsystems bought it, and uh, ever since, a lot of people haven't really liked it as much because of the way that Sun's managed it. So uh, there have been some other forks that are essentially the same thing as MySQL, um, but they have different names. So MariaDB is that, and supposedly it is supposed to have um, better performance anyway. All right. So that all being said, what we're going to do is download it for uh, the OSX package over here. If you're on Windows, there is another um, tutorial that you could watch instead that's going to be more appropriate for what you're doing. Um, I don't have a tutorial for Linux, but you know, it's, it's all basically the same. So go ahead and start your download. And it's going to ask you where you want to download it. I already downloaded it here, so I'm just going to cancel the download. But um, if it doesn't ask you, it's going to automatically download it to wherever your particular um, browser has told it to download it. So if it doesn't ask you, it's because of the way that your browser is set up. So go look wherever your browser downloads things. All right, so um, I'm going to move this over. And this is what we've got here. It's a DMG package. So I'll go ahead and launch that. And uh, it's a single click installer. So I'll go ahead and do this. And I need to authenticate. OK, and it will start the installer.
go ahead and click on next. Oops. Uh, and then you want to make sure that you're uh, doing the core files and the developer files. All right. And then you're just going to walk through it. And this is telling you where it's going to locate it. It's going to put it in the applications folder in a new folder called Jamp. All right. And then I'm going to deselect this thing about Bitnami. We're not going to mess with Bit Bitnami. Uh, I'm going to be Basically, the Bitnami stuff allows you to do single-click installs for WordPress and things like that. Um, and I actually, whenever we do get to the WordPress stuff later in the course, I actually want to show you from the ground up how how all of that stuff works. I don't want you to use single-click installers because then that way you'll be extremely educated about what you really need to do. Uh, sometimes single-click installers hide a lot of uh, of the process from you. And whenever there are problems, and there will always be problems at some point, um, then you might not know, understand like how to how to deal with it, like how things work. So anyway, click next, and it's going to take a few minutes. Okay, so it's finished installing, and uh, it's giving me the screen. I'm going to go ahead and leave this selected to launch Jamp, and I'll click on finish. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring you to uh, the the dashboard page. And one of the things I want you to notice is the way that the URL looks up here. And for, in fact, look at the domain name area, the place that would be for the host name. And when I say domain name, uh, it's also the same as saying the host name. So host name, domain name, OK? Um, and yours is going to look different. Uh, this is grabbing a value somewhere from the settings in my computer. And uh, it is probably some sort of broadcast name, and specifically it's a, a, a version of the host name. And this is uh, something to do with my router. So if yours doesn't look exactly like this, that's OK. Um, one of the things that you might see that is true, and there are lots of different ways, and I'm going to talk a little bit about all these different ways to put something as a host name here um, on, a, on your Mac. And this is going to look different like if you're using Windows. It's not going to do the same thing. It'll just say localhost up here. But um, one of the other things that you can look at, if you go to your preferences, your system preferences on your Mac, and you go over here to sharing, You'll notice up here what your computer's name is, and then it says computer on the local network can access your computer at, and then it says lees-macbook-pro.local, because that's the name of my computer name. If I were to copy this, all right, if I were to copy that, and I were to replace this setting right here, in fact, I'm just going to make that lowercase, make all of these lowercase, because I think that that's what it's going to want it to do, all right? and. Uh, and I just leave the dashboard there and I hit return, you see that it loads the same page. Because the, the way that your computer is set up is that it knows how to refer to its own self with its broadcast name. But that's not what we're going to use in the class. Um, and in fact, if you were to look at the ZAMP icon is right here, you'll see that this might is probably sitting underneath your dashboard somewhere running. It's basically the welcome page. And one of the ways you can always get back to this dashboard page right here is you can click on go to application and see what it does. It actually loads it using localhost whenever you load it for the first time from your application. Um, so the very first time that you actually ha install it and it loads, you might see something where it's putting the name of your computer up here you know, saying whatever the name is dot local slash dashboard. But every time you go to launch it uh, fresh from this launcher where you say go to application, then it's going to launch it as localhost. Let me talk a little bit about what this host name is all about. So on a computer, localhost, and I'm going to go ahead and close the thing that's got my computer name. All right. In fact, I'll just close all those other things. And let's talk about localhost. Localhost is the name that all computers have mapped to themselves. It's sort of like if I am talking about myself as a person, I would say me, myself, I. All right. Well, another person would also say me, myself, I, but I know that they're referring to themselves whenever they say it, right? And whenever another person even yet again says it, me, myself, I, I know that they're not talking about me. I know that they're talking about themselves, right? We all understand that we have this ability to self-refer, right? Well, that's kind of what localhost is. Every single computer that just out of the box, including servers, they're going to have this thing called a hosts file. And the host file maps this IP address. It's called a loopback address called 127.0.0.1. Okay. And that is your loopback address. And your loopback address for all computers 
out of the box, it's going to be 127.0.0.1. It's called ref the recursive loopback address. It's like saying as a person, me, myself, I, mine, right? Okay. And so that means that if I wanted to access somebody else's computer, I couldn't use 127.0.0.1 because it would actually be referring to my own computer. Same is true for localhost because localhost is mapped to that number. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you don't have to do this along with me, but if you want to just look at something really quickly, I'm going to go to my terminal. I'm going to show you, like I said, you don't have to understand how to use the terminal on your computer, but somewhere in a hidden folder, you have um, CD has changed directory, so I'm going to change my directory to the Etsy folder. And Etsy is a hidden directory on uh, Linux based or uh, Unix based computers, and a Mac is based in Unix. It's based on the Darwin distribution. All right. And so if I were to go and look inside of my Etsy folder, I'm going to do a list on it. You'll see that there's a file here called hosts. So we're going to take a quick look at it. I'm going to clear the screen and I'm going to say more hosts. And then this is the contents of the file right here. And it's just showing it to me. I don't have it open right now, but you can see what it's doing. It's saying this loopback address, 127.0.0.1, is mapping itself to the name of localhost, right? And you really shouldn't change this, okay? And then this is something that is based on the broadcast. It's based on uh, the router. Don't ever mess with this just so you understand that's the way that the host name works. Okay, so now you understand where we're getting localhost that it's mapped to the 127.0.0.1 address. Okay, um, so let's do this. Okay, so now that's what we're gonna be using. All right, like I said, I can't see somebody else's computer. Like for instance, if you're in my class, right, and you need help later in the semester, and I say, hey, send me a link to where you have stuff on the server, and you go here and you type localhost dash whatever slash whatever, wherever you've got your stuff, and then you send me that address, well, I can't do anything with that because I have no way to get into your computer remotely to look at that because that local environment is literally local to your own, your own computer, your own environment, all right? So just so you understand also, let me go back up here one more time. If I were to go to my network settings and you were to uh, just happen to look at, for instance, um, if I go to advanced here and I want to go to TCP IP, you can see the current IP address that you're getting from your router that is on your network. So this is my current router. So if I were to copy that IP address, for instance, if I, let's say that I'm at your house or I'm at the coffee shop that you're also connected to wirelessly and I, I found this address, right? And I said, okay, let's take that address and now let's go up here and let's paste that there. Look what happens. It's because I can get to this and I could do this actually from another computer that was on the same wireless network. I could get to this computer's local host environment as long as I'm on that same address. Now, again, I couldn't get to that address at your house, from my house, for instance, because it's on a router. It's on your route. It's you know basically on your wireless router at your house. And I, there's no way for me to get into that, right? Because your IP address does not broadcast outside of your home. It, your router is gonna block that. So I just want you to kind of get some, some sense of how all of this stuff works. Even if you don't fully understand it, I want you to understand that this is the host name and there are some different ways through network protocols that uh, the name resolution to this host name uh, and IP addressing can actually reach the same the same uh, web serving directory. Now that being said, I also want to show you what happens whenever you go to manage servers and let's turn the Apache web server off. Let's just tell it to stop running its service. Its service is a service that runs in the background. It's a little, little application that just runs, 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 and it broadcasts on that port 80. So port 80 is the web serving port on your computer. And now let's go to localhost dashboard. And it's gonna tell me that the site can't be reached. This is why you uh, actually have to install this developer package on your computer is because PHP is attached to this Apache web service and it can't, you can't parse PHP without it being attached to this Apache web service. When you are not running your Apache web server, 
you're going to get something that looks like this. All right. So just if you if you do that, just remember later in the semester so that you don't you know forget. You need to go ahead and start your web service, and you need to wait till this little amber color turns green, and then you can go back here and you see it reloads. Okay. All right, so hopefully you understand a little bit about that. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is what does this dashboard business mean? 